Hello and welcome to Amigos Retro Gaming. I'm going to make a series of videos on the uh, upgrades I'm doing to my Amiga 2500 and uh, that'll include a hard drive, internal hard drive upgrade, Supra, and a flicker fixer and a RAM card, 4 megabyte RAM upgrade. The A2500 originally came with a an A2620 CPU card which sported a Motorola 68020 CPU running at 14 megahertz. Now you can see here the um, expansion slot for the CPU card for the accelerator card and the there's three Zorro slots here for plugging in Amiga Zorro um, cards and two 16-bit uh, slots which also include the Zorro slot as well and then you've got up above that you've got two 8-bit slots here's the expansion slot for the flicker fixer that I'll be installing so here we've got the A 2320 flicker fixer with the uh, video output and the switch uh, for enabling and disabling the flicker fixer on the back there so I'm just going to slot that into the expansion card so this is on the very right of the machine near the uh, power supply there Okay, I'll just uh, screw in the card here to secure it. So the flicker fixer um, just allows you to display in the higher resolution modes uh, without that annoying flicker that you might um, uh, see when you try and output those high res modes through the RGB port. And the switch you can see on the back there is just to enable um, or disable the flicker fixer. You can have two screens hooked up to the Amiga, one through the RGB and one via the flicker fixer as well. So time to install the hard drive. Uh, this particular card's a Supra Drive 2000 WordSync and I've installed a Fujitsu 1GB hard drive into it. So um, it's just a matter of selecting what slots, uh, what slot to put it in, uh, leaving enough spare slots for the remainder of the upgrades. So um, I'm just going to choose the uh, furthest slot there, and because um, the hard drive does hang out the other side a little bit, so it's probably a good idea to to put it um, right at this other end where it's not going to interfere with other cards. Okay, time for the uh, software installation. I've booted the um, Amiga from the floppy disk, the SuperDrive install floppy disk, and it's automatically firing up the Super HD tools here because it detected that there were no partitions existing on the drive. So uh, there it's found two, uh, it's actually found the drive uh, and it's assigned automatically to partitions eh0 and eh1 I'm just going to leave the defaults I mean probably should change those names to dh0 to or D, and dh1 just to um, you know make it sort of tie in with the standard uh, drive letter assignments so just doing a low level heart um, format here and that took about 20 minutes I just cut the video there Okay, and it's actually doing something here. I could see hard drive um, activity while it was uh, doing this. So uh, you might find parts of this video I'll uh, speed up the action here so you don't have to sit through the entire installation process because it does take some time.
So it's asking me here if I want to install Workbench, which I do. I'm going to install Workbench 2.04. Okay, here it's installing files from the SuperDrive install disk. I'll just speed this up a little here four times. And now it's asking me if I would like to insert the uh, Workbench disk. So I'm uh, installing Workbench 2.04. Wouldn't it be nice if our Amiga floppy disk drives were always that fast? Yeah, so I thought I'd just talk about uh, what my plans are to, um, with some of the other uh, cards that I want to install in this machine. Um, I've got a bridge board. A, a 286 bridge board uh, that I want to install. So effectively uh, you can run um, Intel based software on the Amiga. So it's running an, an Intel um, 286 processor and you can do things like uh, install DOS, you know, uh, I guess you could probably even install Windows 3.1 or something like that. I haven't really looked too far into it but um, I'm certainly going to start by uh, putting DOS on there so um, yeah just keep an eye out for uh, uh, the other videos in the series. So here it's asking for the Supra tools disk which I've inserted there so it's installing the all the Supra tools that are you know uh, required on the workbench Okay, just asked for the Supra disk again. Just must have needed a few more files from there. And then asked me to um, remove the disk from the drive, the floppy disk. So here's the moment of truth. I've actually uh, forced it to boot off the hard drive by holding the two mouse buttons at startup. That gives you the boot menu. And it's looking pretty good here. So it's just asking for the extras disk there, I'll just bypass that and you can see so we've got workbench it's actually called it workbench, oh no that's the disk SuperDrive 0, that'll be the main workbench install and SuperDrive 1 will be the other partition so um, everything looks fairly normal here, there's a super drive, um, super folder drawer And just having a look at the super tools there, see what it finds. It should find that drive again. And there's the two um, partitions there. So everything looks in order. Just go and uh, rename those um, those drive partitions. Super check ROM utility here gives us some basic ROM information, model number. And uh, let's have a wee look at the memory we've got installed here. So it's just got the default uh, 1 meg of chip RAM. Okay, let's install the board here. It's a 4 megabyte ARAM board. So just select the next available slot. Slide it down in there, it's pretty straightforward. And then uh, let's have a wee look and see what this interface is. So we should have 4 meg fast RAM. Yep. And 1 meg chip RAM. So, yep, that's great. Thanks very much for watching.